Good evening everyone. My name is Richard Hornby and welcome to this special Christmas episode of Tea with Richard. Now, I'm sure this isn't the Christmas that you expected. 2020 has been a very difficult year. I know some people aren't with their families, aren't with the people around them who they're usually with at this time of year. But that doesn't mean we can't share in our traditions. And one particular tradition in my household is the telling of a story at about this time on Christmas Eve. That story is the story of a little reindeer who had a very big job on Christmas Day. When I'm at home with my parents, I usually read this story from one of the original books published in the 1960s. But unfortunately, I can't do that tonight. So I'm reading from the story from my iPad. This is the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Robert L. May. Twas the day before Christmas, and all through the hills the reindeer were playing, enjoying the spills of skating and coasting and climbing the willows, and hopscotch and leapfrog protected by pillows. While every so often they stopped to call names, at one little deer not allowed in their games. Ha ha! Look at Rudolph! His nose is a sight. It's red as a beet, twice as big, twice as bright. While Rudolph just cried, what else could he do? He knew the things they were saying were true. Where most reindeer's noses are brownish and tiny, poor Rudolph's was red, very large and quite shiny. In daytime it dazzled, the decoration shows that. At night time it glowed like the eyes of a cat. And putting dirt on it just made it look muddy. Oh boy, was he mad when they nicknamed him Ruddy. Although he was lonesome, he was always good, obeying his parents as good reindeer should. And that's why on this day, Rudolph almost felt playful. He hoped that from Santa, soon driving his sleigh full of presents and candy and dollies and toys for good little animals, good girls and boys, he'd get just as much. And this is what pleased him, as the happier, handsomer reindeer who teased him. So as night and a fog hid the world like a hood, he went to bed hopeful. He knew he'd be good. While way, way up north on this same foggy night, old Santa was packing his sleigh for its flight. This fog, he complained, will be hard to get through. He shook his round head, and his tummy shook too. Without any stars or a moon as our compass, this extra dark night is quite likely to swamp us. To keep from collisions, we'll have to fly slow. To keep our direction, we'll have to fly low. We'll steer by the street lamps and houses tonight in order to finish before it gets light. Just think how the boys' and girls' faith would be shaken if we didn't reach them before they awaken. Come Dasher, come Dancer, come Prancer and Vixen, come Comet, come Cupid, come Donner and Blitzen. Be quick with your suppers, get hitched in a hurry. You too will find fog, a delay and a worry. And Santa was right. As he usually is, the fog was as thick as a soda's white fizz. Just not getting lost needed all Santa's skill, with street signs and numbers more difficult still. He tangled in treetops again and again and barely missed hitting a four-motored plane. The air was still foggy, the night dark and drear, when Santa arrived at the home of the deer. A ledge that he tripped on while seeking the chimney gave Santa a spill and a painful skinned knee. 
The room he came down in was blacker than ink. He went for a chair and found it a sink. The first reindeer bedroom was so very black. He tripped on the rug and fell flat on his back. So dark that he had to move close to the bed and squint very hard at the sleeping deer's head before he could choose the right kind of toy. But all this took time and filled Santa with gloom while slowly he groped towards the next reindeer's room. The door he just opened when, to his surprise, a dim but quite definite light met his eyes. The lamp wasn't burning. The glow came instead from something that lay at the head of the bed. And there lay, but wait now, what would you suppose? The glowing, you guessed it, was Rudolph's red nose. So this room was easy. This one little light let Santa pick quickly the gifts that were right. How happy he was till he went out the door. The rest of the house was as black as before. So black that it made every step a dark mystery. And then came the greatest idea in all history. He went back to Rudolph and started to shake him, of course, very gently, in order to wake him. And Rudolph could scarcely believe his own eyes. You could just imagine his joy and surprise at seeing who stood there, so real and so near, while telling the tale I've already told here. Poor Santa's sad story of dark and delay, the fog and the blackness and losing the way, the horrible fear that some children might waken before his complete Christmas trip had been taken. And you, he told Rudolph, may yet save the day. Your wonderful forehead may yet pave the way for a wonderful Christmas. It actually might. Old Santa, you notice, was extra polite to Rudolph regarding his wonderful forehead. To call it a big shiny nose would sound horrid. I need you, said Santa, to help me tonight to lead all my dear on the rest of our flight. And Rudolph broke out into such a big grin, it almost connected his ears and his chin. A note for a folks, he dashed off in a hurry. I've gone to help Santa, he wrote. Do not worry, said Santa. My sleigh I'll bring down to the lawn. You stick in the chimney. And in a flash, he was gone. Sir so Rudolph pranced out through the door and took his pride place at the head of the sleigh. The rest of the night, well, what would you guess? Old Santa's idea was a brilliant success. And brilliant was almost no word for the way that Rudolph directed the deer and the sleigh. In spite of the fog, they flew quickly and low and made such good use of the wonderful glow from Rudolph's uh, forehead at each intersection that not even once did they lose their direction. While as for the houses and streets with a sign on them, they merely flew close so that Rudolph could shine on them to tell who lived where and to just what to give whom. They'd fly by each window and peek in the room. Old Santa knew always which children were good and minded their parents and ate as they should. So Santa selected the gift that was right, while Rudolph's uh, forehead gave just enough light. It all went so fast that before it was day, the very last present was given away. The very last stocking was filled to the top just as the sun was preparing to pop. This sun woke the reindeer in Rudolph's hometown. They found the short message that he'd written down, then gathered outside to await his return. And were they excited, astonished to learn that Rudolph, the ugliest deer of them all, Rudolph the red-nosed, bashful and small, the funny-faced fellow they'd always called names and practically never allowed in their games, was now to be envied by all, far and near, for no greater honour can come to a deer than riding with Santa and guiding his sleigh, the number one job 
on the number one day. The sleigh and its reindeer soon came into view and Rudolph still led them as downwards they flew. Oh boy was he proud as they came to a landing right where his handsomer playmates were standing. Those bad deer who used to do nothing but tease him would now have done anything only to please him. They felt even sorrier that they had been bad when Santa said, Rudolph, I have never had a deer quite so brave or so brilliant as you at fighting Black Fog and steering me through. By you, last night's journey was actually bossed. Without you, I'm certain we'd all have been lost. I hope you'll continue to keep us from grief on future dark trips as Commander in Chief. While Rudolph just blushed from his head to his toes until his whole fur was red as his nose. The crowd first applauded and then started to screech, hooray for our Rudolph and we want a speech. But Rudolph was bashful despite being a hero and tired his sleep on the trip totaled zero. So that's why his Christmas speech was quite short and not bright. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And that's why whenever it's foggy and grey, it's Rudolph the Red Nose who guides Santa's sleigh. Be listening this Christmas, but don't make a peep because that late at night, children should be asleep. The first sound you'll hear on the roof, provided there's fog, will be Rudolph's small hoof. And soon after that, if you're still as a mouse, you may hear a swish as he flies around the house and gives Santa enough light to give him a view of you and your room. And when they're all through, you may hear them call as they drive out of sight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night. That was the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And although Christmas is a time for enjoyment, it falls to people like me to also draw attention to a few serious things. As with my previous series of videos in the last major national lockdown, we have to remind ourselves to keep our physical distance. Not, maybe not to hug our friends and our family, even if tomorrow we've taken the decision to go and form a Christmas bubble for the day with them. We need to make sure that we keep at least two metres apart from everybody we pass, be that on the streets or outside, and really take extra care. This new variant of coronavirus, which is around at the moment, is more infectious than the previous one. Early estimates show that it's about 70% more infectious. And it has been recommended by a lot of people, and I'm going to repeat this here, that the best way to avoid spreading coronavirus when you're out and about is to pretend that you already have the disease. You have this very infectious form of coronavirus and to act as if you do not want to spread that virus to other people. So yes, that means leaving extra distance. That means maybe not doing the activities that you thought you would be doing. Maybe not planning what you're going to be doing in the following days and to just watch and see whether it's safe to do so in your area. Furthermore, this time can be difficult for a lot of people. And if you are struggling, on the screen now, you will see some numbers of pe for people who th you can contact to talk about the problems you're having at Christmas. If you're somebody who is alone, I hope this video has given you a little bit of companionship for a few minutes. And I hope that if everybody who's watching this follows and adheres to the guidance, we can get through coronavirus quickly. And that 2021 
will be a lot better than 2020. It might take a bit of time to, for this virus wave to subside. It might take time to get the vaccinations out to everybody, but we will get there eventually. Please have patience. Please stay safe. And if you do need help, do not be afraid to go contact any of the people whose numbers, people or organisations whose numbers are on screen now and talk to someone. And finally, it's time for a moment of reflection. Most of my episodes have had a little time to breathe mental health moment in them. And this one is no exception. And as we look at the Christmas candles, we think about the fact that we have now passed the shortest day. The days are getting longer. The light of the new year is coming. We will get through this difficult winter with time. And for those Christians out there, the light of Jesus is about to be born into this world. And we hope that with that light of a new year, of the evenings getting brighter, the days getting longer, so too our mood can get brighter. So too can we share the feeling of community that we've built up throughout the last year. And to do that, there's just one more thing that I'd like to ask you to do. Some of you may have heard about this on the news already, but this video was released at five o'clock. And at six o'clock tonight, that's in probably what is about 40 minutes time now, please go outside and jingle. If you've got jingly bells, Christmas bells, go and jingle them. If not, either put some coins in a jar or grab a pan and a wooden spoon and go out on your front doors and jingle, ring bells for two minutes to show that we, as a globe, because this will be happening at 6pm in every country in the world, we as a globe can get over coronavirus. We are together. We are one big community. We can also incorporate into this thanks in the story earlier. Santa described Rudolph as a hero saving Christmas. There are a lot of heroes in this world. The NHS staff, the ambulance staff, the carers, the emergency services, those volunteers who are helping in their communities every day, making sure people are okay and people are well. Ring those bells to celebrate what they have done as well this year and to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much to those of you who've watched episodes of Tea with Richard in the past. All of series one can be found on YouTube and there will be some more episodes forming a series two. They won't be as regular as series one, but they will be starting again in the new year. So with that in mind, can I just take this opportunity to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a happy and most importantly safe New Year.